we'll start with the fact that Gnabry was at Arsenal for four years. So he's an Arsenal player. He had Arsene Wenger there as his manager, four years, and then they loaned him out. And he just said, have you seen Rory? Throw that ball. <laughs> and he said, come and have a look at this. And he just, and he was a, apparently a, a county javelin thrower. It's not the fact that we're going to sell him for a profit. It's the fact that Crouch is going to keep us in the Premier League for the next three <laughs> or four years. Mm. That's the investment. And <laughs> says, Gaff. And I go, Rick. And he goes, you worry too much. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, what? And he went, that's why you got no air, mate. <laughs> Woody turns to me and says, Gaffer, he says, whatever you do, don't put me on, please. And I said, what? He says, I can't play as well as what Ryan's just played and you just hammered him. <laughs> What's happening, everyone, and welcome to Sports Bible Stories. I'm Rory Jennings. And I'm Asma there. And today, we welcome the one and only Tony Pulis onto the show. Thank you so much, Tony. No problem. Really, really appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Um, what have you been up to? You haven't been working now since the Sheffield Wednesday job, which was, what, December 2020? No, I've, um, I've had a great time, actually. Uh, I've always, in my life, in my management life, lived away from home. So I've had a house in Bournemouth um, and all the clubs, I think it's 11, is 11, 12 clubs I've had. I've always um, kept the family, Debbie and the children down there and traveled. So to actually uh, have the opportunity and chance to, to actually settle down in a, uh, you know, beautiful, we've got a beautiful house down there on the coast. So yeah, um, it's been lots of stuff. I've done lots of um, stuff with different people um, that have kept me busy. Obviously, I do the radio, TV sometimes, and bits and pieces. Um, I keep in touch with the football. Um, but no, it's been, I've enjoyed it. I keep myself busy. I'm not one of them that can sit around. Um, so there's always something going on. And Have you got any interest in getting back into management? Um, I would be reluctant to go back in as a manager. Um, I've had people ring me and ask for a little bit of advice and would I pop in and see them and do bits and pieces. Uh, and I've done that with one or two sports as well, not just football. So that has been interesting. Um, the other sports um, that I've got involved with have been um, interesting and uh, different in some ways. Um, but in the majority of, uh, of instances, um, building a, a sports programme. And when you're looking for like to get into a club, what's like the key things for you? Like, what's what's important when choosing a club? Well, as a manager, yeah, I th the, the the most important thing in, is the chairman. Really, is the owner. Um, I think the, the the game's changed since you know I was managing in the '90s, which is was probably before some of you were born. Um, <laughs> and it, you know, it, it's it's what's name. Then there was a manager, a secretary, and the chairman. So there was no one in between, really, the manager and the, the chairman, apart from the secretary, who ran the finances. So you, you could actually get things done uh, pretty quickly. And also, you were given the opportunity and the time to build something because there was no noise in between. Mm. If you have a look at today, you know, the layers in between the coach, as they call them now, or the manager, is just extraordinary. And, you know, when you've got different layers and different people involved, there's always going to be a conflict somewhere in what you want to do and what you want to achieve as a manager. And I find that um, that, that is a, a, a big issue for managers today or for coaches today. And if I was starting again today, whereas I've always had people who have uh, uh, you know, come in and been coaches, um, uh, I would definitely, definitely have someone now who worked above me, came in with me, but worked above me, worked at boardroom level um, and looked after that side of the business or the, the, the club um, while I got on with the, the football side because I don't think, um, no disrespect to the people who are in positions, but I don't think there's a strong enough bond between them and the managers when it comes to a manager being sacked. I think if, a, if someone came in with me and knew that if I got the sack, he got the sack, I think he'd fight a lot more mm -hmm. than the person who's there who is not going to get the sack when I get the sack and is going to see me off and then most probably see the next manager off and the next manager off. Um, and I think, I think 
uh, personally, and, and again, this is, is just me, uh, um, my thoughts, and I've said it before, I think if Frank Lampard had had someone at Chelsea above working in that area, he most probably would have kept his job a little bit longer than what he did. Um, and, you know, and I'm, I'm not being disrespectful to anybody here. I just think someone who is with a manager or a coach and knows his job's on the line if he loses mm -hmm. it, works and will try a lot harder to keep him in the job than maybe one or two who are in that position who are not affected by the manager being sacked. Mm. So pick the chairman, not the club. Yeah. Would be the, would be the strategy. I'd, I, you get, listen, I've, I've, I've had uh, numerous chairmen, uh, nu numerous people in charge. Um, and there's, you know, you, you find, when you get into a football club, you find things um, can be different. Um, and I've always thought that the relationship, you know, I, I look back, Norman Awood at Bournemouth was my first chairman. Um, the club were in a, a lot of financial trouble. Norman was very honest with me, very, very understanding um, in respect of the, the work I had to do. It was laid out in front of me um, and we had to try and get the finances right. It was honest and straightforward. Um, and then I've had other people, you go in and, you know, they, they say one thing. Um, and then they do other things. And, you know, I've just always been one that if I didn't think it was right, then I don't think I've ever hung around too long. So, Tony, we're going to try and get to know you a bit better. Yeah. We've got some quick fire questions for you, if that's all right. Yep. Who did you support when you were growing up? Cardiff and Man City. Uh, Man United, sorry. Man City. <laughs> <laughs> Car Car Cardiff, Cardiff and Man United. Both? Yeah, well, Cardiff was... Um, I was in Newport, it should have been Newport really, but I, I was brought up with Toshak playing at Cardiff before he got sold to Liverpool a long, long time ago. Yeah. So I, I would go to Ninian Park when I had the opportunity and the chance and watch those games and really, you know, that was my first taste of, you know, I thought then Cardiff were a big club. Mm. And what was the Man United? Why? Man United was more from my father, I think, and, and they had the great team then, the team in 68 that won the European Cup with best, Law Charlton. No, one a bad team to follow. Yeah, not bad at all. And, and uh, what about your favourite footballer now? Favourite footballer now? Um, I, th I think uh, Harry Kane is is a fantastic player. Um, I think that over a period of time, he has shown the consistency at the top, top level um, for everybody to have tremendous mm. respect for him. And do you think he'll, he'll stay at Tottenham? I know there's a lot of talk about him leaving potentially. Do you see him leaving? Oh, blimey. Uh, you know, that, that would be, uh, that would be an, uh, I'd be amazed if he left. Um, but I've been amazed loads of times in my life with football. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a favourite manager growing up? Um, well, Jimmy Schooler was at Cardiff. You, you lot won't know him. Um, when I was, uh, and I did a few stories about Jimmy. Um, he was a Scotchman, um, very passionate. Uh, and then obviously Matt Busby, th those two mm. teams that I'd followed, so Matt and, and was probably Jimmy. Um, they were the two that, that I knew more than, than the others. And what about uh, favourite manager now? Favourite manager now? I, I think the Premier League are very fortunate to have, and have had most probably some of the greatest managers uh, of my era, uh, especially, so it's been it's been a, a pleasure to to manage against Pep and um, you know Antonio and you go on. Fengers was obviously fabulous at Arsenal. All the clubs who have who have, who have been successful, Klopp and and them, I've been fortunate to to manage against them. The only one that that really has has missed out has been the uh, Atletico Simeone. Mm -hmm. You know who's who. You know, I look at, listen, and and people talk to me about him, and he's most probably the only one that slipped through the net and hasn't managed in England. Um, it would have been lovely to have seen him come to England and see how he set a club up and set a side up. Do you yeah, think it running. would work? Do you think he would have? Yeah, I, th I think I think the the top top managers given the opportunity. Mm. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know they 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 know how to win. I, I think Eddie probably, Howe. Yeah. Eddie Howe went out to learn from him. I think you yeah. know in his in yeah. in the gap that he took yeah. between the Bournemouth job yes. and taking Newcastle. Yeah. I think he went to study Diego Simeone's approach. Did you ever do anything like that? I went out. Um, I went out a couple of times and watched uh, different um, different people work. When I was at Stoke, I went out to Germany 
um, and did a bit there and, and in uh, Spain. Um, just watched the training, watched the setup, had a look at things, and especially the youth development side of it as well, and seen the difference between, or tried to find the difference between what the Germans and the Spanish do compared to our, our, our setup. But uh, th that was 10, 12 years ago. Since then, obviously, the academies have come in. Mm. And we're spending now an absolute fortune on um, on developing young players. The academies have, have become an industry within an industry. Um, and, you know, in, in some ways, a bigger. They have more, you know, more staff. There's a lot of money now invested in, in the production of young young kids. So, yeah, I think we've most probably, we've got uh, an industry um, that football invests more than any other country in the world in. Mm, yeah. So very fortunate. Talking of Germany, uh, we've seen a lot of the young English players going out there. Do you think that's the right move for like, the academy players? I don't about? think the Germans are, are daft and I think they've most probably um, understood the, the, the workings that are going on in England in respect of the academies. And see, the problem you've got with all the, the top academies, if you look at Chelsea, uh, Man City, and, and the, the, they need to win, I don't know, at the moment, Chelsea ain't doing that, but they right. need they they uh, they need they need to win. So they, in respect of all the money that they they're plowing into the uh, young players, managers are coming in, and especially when Abramovich was there, you know they they needed to win trophies and to blood young players and take a chance with young players. They didn't do it very often, mm. and I think Chelsea have have produced a lot of very very good players, and then they've left because they couldn't get first team football. And I, I think if you look at the big clubs, there's a lot of good talent that never get the opportunity to play in their first teams because of the demands of that team to win and win and win, not to uh, develop. Um, and that's, that's an interesting fact. It's also, uh, if you're clever enough, um, as a person who's got, who's got enough money to invest, it's a real good place to fish because you will get some real quality players who haven't broke through yet, um, but would become good players given the opportunities. Like the Southampton model, they've looked at City's youth products and taken. Yeah, I, I, yeah, and and you know that 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 is most probably if if like I say, if you look at the top top clubs, the money they're paying um, to bring young players from South America all over the world mm. and put them into their academies, they're bringing families over. Mm. You know, they're, they're settling them in and everything else. They, they are investing enormous amounts of money. So if you're with a, a, a smaller club or a club that's got a little bit of money, instead of chasing your tail all over the world, really and truthfully, if you could sit and, and study four or five of the top Premier League clubs who invest hundreds of millions of pounds in their academies, then um, there's, there's, there's certainly talent there. Away from football a bit, Tony, what's your biggest interest away from the game? Um, history. Uh, I've always been very, very um, keen to read about uh, leaders. Um, going back, you know, way, way back, you know, the Roman Empire. I spent a lot of time on Napoleon. Um, really interested in a little kid who, who was born in Corsica, and then ends up, you know, producing and and, and being in charge of a great empire. Mm. Actually, taking an army into Moscow. And sitting in Moscow, how long did he sit there for a couple of months until the weather turned and he got chased out? So, you know, there's not many people who have taken armies into, into Russia and gone all the way uh, to Moscow. So he, he interested me as a, as a lad who'd come from quite a wealthy family in Corsica, but then had been placed in a school in France. And I think at the time Corsica was split between Italy and France. What, what, it, what half of them wanted to be Italians, half of them wanted to be French. For him to be stuck into an academy as such a young lad and then to go through and, and, you know, it was interesting to see the steps he took to eventually get where where he got. And that was, you know, a lot of people say he was a, a tyrant and everything else. I, I thought he was uh, a very, very clever, clever man and a, and a fabulous tactician on the, the battlefield. Do you see a bit of yourself in there, Napoleon? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I, I just, I, they interest me. The people who have come from nothing. You know, I've read loads of books, you know, um, uh, Shackleton, you know, the, the Endurance, mm. I don't know if you've yeah, read Explorer, that book. Yeah. Um, that, that is just an, an amazing book where, you know, the, 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 you know, the whole ex expedition 
falls to bits when they get caught in ice. And I think he had 38, 39 people with him, and or it might even be more than that. And after 18 months in, in the most horrendous conditions, you know, they, they, he ends up bringing them all back safe and sound. You know, the, the ship had broken up. They only had two small rowing boats. Um, you know, they had to get to Elephant Island and from there to, to, to I think it was Georgia. Um, just extraordinary. You know, they're, 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 these people are just extraordinary people who lived in, obviously, a different era, different values um, to us and different uh, motivations. But, um, yeah, you know, people who have done and achieved things um, interest me. Huge. What about uh, within the game? Any career regrets? Um, I left South, South Wales when I was 16 years of age. I was brought up in a big family down on the docks, only a couple of streets away from the, the dock gates. Um, there was four boys in one bed, two girls in another bed, mum and dad in the little box room. So there was eight of us living in a little house uh, and we didn't have um, a lot, but we had everything. The community was fabulous, it was a fabulous community I was brought up into. To have the opportunity at 16 years of age of going to a professional football club. Um, and I, I always say this to people, I can remember looking out the window in that uh, carriage and saying, I'm not going to come back. I, I really, really want to make a go of this. And 50 odd years later, yeah, 50 odd years later, nearly, <laughs> um, I'm still doing stuff in football. So have I got regrets? <laughs> None whatsoever. It's been. A, it's, I've just been so blessed. Oh, that's such a nice outlook, isn't it? Yeah, no, hundred percent. And um, I, I know the answer to this. Well, I'm sure I will. But are you a tracksuit manager or a suit manager? Uh, yeah, tracksuit. Yeah. <laughs> you love. What's your, what's your favourite tracksuit? Do you have like one? Oh, you no, 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 no. I, I, like I, I, yeah, I think the caps were more of a problem for me. I used to. I used to be very choosy with uh, what caps I wore. Uh, the tracksuits were okay. Mm. Um, and at the time when I was managing, I could get into some of them now I've put a bit of timber on them <laughs> <laughs> what was the proudest moment of your career greatest achievements I think being in the game for so long and enjoying it for so long uh, regrets no I don't I just you know it's, it's, I'm not one of them I don't you know I leave a football club and I leave it behind and I leave the memories and, and I try and wash away all the, the bad stuff and just concentrate on all the good stuff mm. and be really positive with it and you know I'm 65 now so, you know, I, I just want to go through life enjoying myself. I don't know what I'm doing here, but, you know. Unless I'm out of Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to put up with one or two things. <laughs> and uh, and uh, who was the most influential person on your career? Oh, I, I, I had a few. I, I think, um, and again, it's a great miss in football at the moment. When I went to Bristol Rovers, as a, uh, I started at 15, 16, uh, we had wonderful mentors. Uh, we had wonderful people, senior people around the club who were full-time and part-time. But they were real football people, genuine football people. But also, you know, football has always reflected, um, you know, life and, you know, the community out there. And I think I'm, I'm a great believer that it, it, it sort of like it, when I was younger, it pulled away. Um, or it, it pulled with with everything. Everything just you know, sort of like came together. And I, I was taught from a very, very young age about respect, about discipline. Um, and they were massive things at Bristol. You know, the, the, the Bill Dodgen, who was, uh, Bill was in his 60s, um, old Bobby Campbell, not the one who was at Chelsea, um, Gordon Bennett, uh, Colin Dobson, all, you know, Don Megson was, was my, he gave me my debut when I was younger. And I'm, if I'm missing people, I do, like Mike Lyons, I'm, I, I do apologise. But they were all great mentors. They would pick you up. If you did anything wrong, they would pick you up. Um, and they would encourage you. If things, you know, I had a very, very bad injury when I was 21 to my ankle. And I was out for well, nearly nine months, and, you know, plaster up the top of my leg and then below my, my knee. And, and to be honest, I, I, there was a great feeling I couldn't play again. And I'd finished the season by playing one game in the third team on a very hard, bumpy uh, pitch um, at Eastville. And I struggled and I really struggled. And after the game, the club gave me an extra year 
this contract used to get one year's then they give you an they gave me an extra year and i think they gave me an extra year thinking at the back of their minds that i might not get through it and that that gave me so much confidence you know i never worked so hard in my life that close season to get myself at a level anyone ever given you any advice that you still live by today I, yeah, I, I, Alex Stock, who was a, a wonderful manager and man, managed actually in Italy and, and managed QPR to a cup final and Fulham, or Fulham, I think it did. Was it Fulham or I think it was Fulham he took to a cup final. Alex was uh, 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 actually fought in the Second World War um, with Montgomery um, in the desert. He was one of the desert rats. So when I was young, young manager starting at Bournemouth, Alex lived down there. He, he was actually in a care home and I used to pop in and see him um, and sit down. He, he loved, he had a, they built him a, a, a lovely greenhouse and he used to grow his own tomatoes and this, that and the other. And he was a very, very upstanding person, shirt and tie always with a jacket and, you know, real mm. stickler and spoke really, you know, not posh, but proper English, not like <laughs> us. Um, and Alex said to me two things. He said, always believe your own eyes. Don't, don't take any notice of anybody else apart from yourself and make your own decisions and stand and fall by those decisions. And that was something I've always done. And if, like I say, if I smelt something that I didn't think was right, then I, it'd be very, very unusual for me to, to sort of like hang on too long mm. if I didn't think it was right. Right, well, you're perhaps uh, renowned for your time at Stoke. Uh, and of course, it was that big phrase, a cold, wet Tuesday night at Stoke. Yep. First of all, uh, how do you feel about that? And um, was that something you, you you and the players were aware of? I think the story at Stoke really started with our first Premier League game at Bolton. We got beat 3-1. I think Gary Megson was manager at Bolton at the time. And Paddy Power wrote us off. I think they paid up on us being relegated. Um, that was the first weekend um, and it was just and it was just the, the thing that I needed it was just the uh, impetus mm. to get the city together and I went on the radio I went in the papers I did a lot of media that week and just made it it's us it's not the team they're putting Stoke City down us the city mm. you lot out there and us um, and it was it was something that I just built on and built on we played Villa, our first home game, beat Villa 3-2, I think. I think Mama scored late on from a long throw. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get uh, on to that. Yeah. And, and what's name? That, that set her off. And it was just, we built it from there, really. But it was, you know, people say, and I've been asked, oh, you must have thought, you know, it was, it was you're going to be up against it, having got beat at Bolton. It was the best thing that happened because of the, what Paddy Power had done. Mm. Can you settle this debate once and for all? Yeah. Could Lionel Messi do it on a cold Tuesday night in Stoke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't he? <laughs> he could do it anywhere. <laughs> Play football. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any, you know, and he, he's just absolutely extraordinary player. Um, and it'd be, you know, he might not get involved as much as maybe he might do in a warm climate. But he'd do two or three things during the game and win the game. Yeah. That's what he is. He's just a special, special person. Would, would you say he's the greatest of all time? I know there's always that debate. No, I, I've, I've spoke to people about this. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm a 50s baby, so, you know, I, I can remember Pelé. Um, Pelé, Maradona, then I'd go Messi, Ronaldo. Um, they would be a full standout. And then you've got, you know, again, it's great players of their time. You know, mm. that, that's, that's the thing. I don't think you can... You can really, get, I can remember Pelé, so he was great at that time. I can remember Maradona, so he was great at that time. Messi, mm. Ronaldo, Cruyff, mm. you know, all, all you know, they, 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 they're just wonderful players. Special, special players. What was it about Arsenal? You used to beat them every time you'd played them. <laughs> every single well, time you used well, to get under their skin. It was an amazing achievement. Yeah, I, th I think that Arsenal helped us enormously by, you know, putting comments, certain comments in the paper that, we actually picked up on you know I, I, I during my management career I'd, I'd always try and find an angle um to play against different teams 
and even make I, I'd make things up. I, you know, I'd come in one day and say, <laughs> you know, have you heard what that player has said about you and, and about the football club? And, and the player well, hadn't lie. said nothing. Well, it's a lie. It was completely. It was just. It was just a motivational tool. You're trolling. That I, yeah. That that, that I, w- I would use. You know, I, I'd say the club had said, or the you know the 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 club had said that you know they hated coming to our place. You know, we weren't that good. We weren't this. We weren't that. And it was a load of nonsense. And the lads used to buy into it. And you know, I, I, I seriously, after every game, I would make sure I got the local papers. So if we played, say Blackburn, I'd want the local papers sent down to to me so I could read them and find little bits and pieces, That's and then just keep that for when we play Blackburn again. And then you know, so I'd have those little motivational. I always wanted an angle. I always thought mm-hmm. the players. Um, especially after maybe two years, the two years in the Premiership, we needed a little bit more motivational at times to play against because we'd come, be, become a little bit more established. Mm. And then you got yourself in a situation where when we were playing the likes of maybe mid-table teams, we were, go, we were playing at Stoke and we were expected to win. And that expectation wasn't with us the first two years. We were always the underdogs. And then it just gradually, we become more established so I had to find a way of really getting into the players and, and mm. getting that little bit extra that was the difference between winning and losing. Going back to Arsenal, I just think it was the supporters, you know, they'd be there about an hour and a half before the game, picking their spot, <laughs> trying to get as close to Arsenal as possible. So they, they, they could give him some stick. But, you know, they, they, it, it was just, it was, yeah, it was special, special days. And um, I have nothing against uh, Wenger at all. Um, Arsenal's fabulous club, and you know one of the the great clubs. When, when I was younger, it was the Arsenal. You know, people used to. And I, some people mm. still say it. And you know, you look at what they're doing today. What Arteta's done there is it's mm. fabulous. Um, so Rory Delap, uh, well renowned for his long throws. You mentioned it earlier as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was that? What was that like? You know, did you every time that you you saw it happen, would you still amaze you, or would it just be like, right, we know? Yeah, it, it started in training. The lads were having a. a I think it was the promotion year. Was it the promotion? I, I, I'm not sure. Or the first year in the, in the Premiership it might have been the promotion year. And they had a competition who could throw it the furthest. Mm. And we'd finished training. There was four or five of them over in the corner. And David Kemp would work with me for years. I had Dave there, Jerry Francis, Mark Connor, um, A.D. Pennock, Reedy. I had all those people. Anyway, Kemp, he came over to me and he, he just said, have you seen Rory throw that ball? <laughs> and, oh, no. And he said, come and have a look at this. And he just, and he was a, apparently a, a county javelin thrower. And he's got, <laughs> he's got um, uh, loose... Uh, what is it called? Limbs? Your shoulder, shoulder. Like double jointed. Double oh, jointed in your shoulders. So he could actually get, you know, get so much power from it. And I was just flabbergasted. Well, I actually give him a telling off. And, <laughs> <laughs> Why haven't you shown us this? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was, it just, it, it just went from there. You know, we worked, we worked really, really hard on, we didn't just throw it in. I see teams today uh, with long throws. It's funny, Arsenal have got a lot of person who throws it long now as well. So, you know, I see people, you know, uh, Liverpool got a throwing coach. Yeah, yeah. That's about to say, so, yeah. you know, the, the stick that we used to take is quite funny now. Um, <laughs> but no, we, we used to really set it up and work hard on our, our set plays. So would you tactically do that? Would you try oh, yeah. and win throw-ins at a particular... No, no, no. When, when we got throw-ins, we'd work on where we wanted players to be. Mm. and areas to to attack and where we thought um, teams would be vulnerable. Was it just lump it up to Crouchy and then get the, get the flick on? Oh, God, lump it up to Crouchy. Remember that goal he scored was against Man City? Yeah, yeah. 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 He yeah. didn't even touch the ground. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was what a great player. Yeah. Peter was. Great lad. And did, did you ever sign players with the tactic in mind? No. Was it, it wasn't like that? No. I, I mean, the other thing is, what I'd like to say about Rory is, Rory played near over 500 games. Um, he was a tremendous player and played a lot of Premier League games and you don't play a lot of Premier League games mm. Mm. you know just being a person who can throw the ball in um, he, and a great a fabulous lad uh, you know I had some wonderful wonderful players at Stoke you know some real um, gritty determined characters who you could who, who you could build a club with Mm. His son's doing well at City, isn't he? Yeah, uh, Liam's just, I think he had a long spell at Stoke and now he's just gone to Preston, mm. um, scored a few goals. 
uh, they tell me he's a, he's a he's a good talent. Yeah, yeah. And talking to Stoke, uh, you got them in their first and only FA Cup final. What was that occasion like? You know, managing the team. Yeah, it was, it was obviously the game before was against Bolton. Was the semi final was the, the when we won five 0 was was absolutely out of this world. That was the first mm-hmm. time that uh, I think the, the club had been to Wembley since not, uh, 72, 1972. So um, you know, for oh no, they might have gone in the playoffs. I'm not sure, but anyway. That was a, a wonderful occasion, and we tried to replicate it with the Man City um, game. And unfortunately, um, you know they beat us one 0 I think we put in a, a real. When you look at City now and and what they were going to develop into, um, you know we missed two really good chances. Kenwin missed a great one on one chance before they scored. Before um, uh, what's name scored the big tall midfield player, oh, great player, Tory, Tory, yeah. great player. Um, he scored the winning goal so yeah pleased for the supporters that they had two visits to Wembley disappointed that we lost you know it, mm. it, there's no satisfaction after you get beat how, how do you prepare for a game like that like you're playing Manchester City all of the riches of the club you're up against Pep Guardiola yeah. obviously it's it's a mismatch in terms of the scale of what the clubs can well, do when we, when, we, when we went to um, the semi-final uh, what we decided to do we trained Monday and Tuesday properly uh, I want to say properly that similar to what we did um, and had Wednesday off and we arranged a train to go down to Wembley we got a bus waiting for us at Waterloo Station I think it was Water 2 or, or whatever it is wherever it goes into now one more to Lou um, anyway we got a bus waiting for us um, and we went to Wembley we didn't tell anyone we were going we just turned up with a bus drove into Wembley parked it under the <laughs> under the oh, covers yeah got the players up in the stands, walked them on the pitch and everything else with our track suits. So they got a feel for the place. And then once we'd had a walk around and a look around, we then took them for an Italian meal in London and we went back and prepared Thursday and Friday for Bolton. And then, um, you know, the, the great thing about the Bolton game, the players had come and seen me and said, oh, now that we're in a semi-final, can we have suits? And I said, no, you can't, you're joking. It's a, sem- it's a semi-final. Get to a final, you can have a suit. But that's a winner's mentality, yeah, I like that. that yeah. that's not, that's, you're not having one for the semi-final, of course. We turn up in our, our track suits and Bolton have got Full brand suits. new suits <laughs> with roses. And, <laughs> so again, my team talk was there you go. made really easy. Um, and, you know, I ripped into, ripped into a few little um, verses um, and you know, it, it just—it was a fantastic day. Any newspaper clippings that you had about the, about the players? I, 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 I had—I've got, or I did have, you know, bucket full of stuff that I mm. would, uh, you know, I'd go in and, and just say to to Kempy, you know, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna say that, and Dave would look yeah. at me and go, "Where'd you get that from?" <laughs> said, yeah, there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> got my sources. <laughs> you know, and, it, and it, you know, like I say, it, it, I thought it helped. So that cup final, obviously, it didn't go as as you hoped, but the club ended up embarking on a European tour. Yeah, Europe was was fabulous. You know, it was, it was a you know, great occasion, and and a, a, the the last game against Valencia, obviously, we played at um, at the Bet Three Six Five Stadium, and uh, you know they they the manager at Aston Villa now and. Uh, uh, Emery Emery was, mm. was in charge of Valencia and they, they beat us 1-0 they, they played really well that night they, they really really contained us we didn't have as many chances as what we were hoping for and they, they looked really strong um, and we'd, we'd had quite a tough season I think that year we played over 50 odd games we got to a quarter finals of the FA Cup that year Liverpool knocked us out 2-1 at Anfield I think we were 1-0 up and we missed another great chance to go 2-0 up they beat, beat us we, we did quite well in the League Cup and then we had these, I think we had 12 games in Europe, mm. all in all. So uh, there was still a concern about the league at that time, you know, as it is now. There's so many um, variations that can happen and you can drop into a bad run of games or you can drop into a really good run of, run of games. For the second game, I made a lot of changes. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of supporters were disappointed with the changes we made. But actually, we went to Valencia and played really, really well. And apart from a very, very poor display from the referee um, and the fact that Kenwin missed two or three really... I can see the header he's missed after about 10 minutes now from a corner and, and you know, he'd bury it nine times out of 10. 
he missed that chance. We played really well. Supporters then, you know, some of the supporters criticised me and I, I accept criticism, but the criticism I would give myself was I should have played that team in the first leg mm. and, not, and not, I should have played them both legs because they were fresh. And we had that, that team, Upson, Woodgate, uh, up front was Fuller, uh, uh, Cameron Jerome, yeah, good players. you know, good mm -hmm. players. You know, the, 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 like I say, the, the supporters took it as a second team. But when you look at that team, that team was a good team mm. and had more experience in Europe, some of them, <laughs> yeah. than what the team I'd played mm. against Valencia Rome. But the experiences were, were, were just absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Mm. And off the back of that, uh, Peter Coates described you as one of the best managers he's ever had. How proud were you when you heard those kind of comments? And no, but I had a, gr a great relationship with Peter. I, I actually, um, uh, you know, obviously... I, I started that that first year and a half, two years. I actually had the Icelandic owners as mm. the manager before Peter then took over. Um, but Peter was always always there in the background. We'd sit down. We just seemed to get on really, really well. And I've got the greatest respect for him and his family. I think, well, I, I don't think. I'm absolutely convinced that eventually they'll get back in the Premiership. I think his son now, John, has taken the reins, mm. and he's found, he's had a difficult time, but. Peter had a difficult time at Stoke as well before all this success came along. So, you know, John will be learning learning on the job, but he's a determined man um, and he knows his football. And I think eventually, they, hopefully, fingers crossed, that, that they do get back to the Premier League and they bring the success to that city that it deserve, the people deserve. An incredible acknowledgement, though. To refer to you as the best manager in Stoke's history. Well, yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's lovely for Peter to say. You know, I'd... You know, I'd say that he, he was part of that, the, you know, me getting that accolade, you know, he, he, he has to take a lot of credit for that. You know, the players that you signed, it seemed to elevate for Stoke, didn't it? It went from, it went from being players that didn't necessarily have that element of glamour to quite Hollywood signings. Well, the likes I, of Crouch yeah, and... I think, I think the, the great thing about it was that, and, and this is what happens in this country, is perception. And once a person's got a perception of someone it's very very difficult mm. for him like I say believe in your eyes it's you know there's that it could be doing something completely different and because the conception a uh, perception is this they just think it's this mm. uh, you know it, it's black I was told it was white and you know so they, they're, they're set in their ways I think if you look at the team and we used to chuckle about it a little bit we had Etherington and Pennant wide you know, people like Crouchy, John Walters, we had a really, really good side there in the end. And, you know, we we played some really, really good stuff, but we never said anything. Everybody said, oh, it's kick it and lump it stuff. And we yeah, yeah, it is kick it yeah. and lump it. <laughs> and before, you know, before you know, as that great saying about could Messi play there, you know, clubs clubs were coming and teams were coming and getting beat before the game started because mm. they thought it was going to be. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't. It was a lot more than that. And and how hands on were you with those transfers? Obviously, did you go to the chairman? Oh, no, of the I, list no I, I had um, I had uh, because I had my relationship with Peter. Um, I had a, a, a big say in all those transfers. Those, those players, the majority of those players, well, all those players that when I was there, um, it would have been signed. You know, I'll, I'll tell you now, Crouchy's one. Um, you know, we, Harry had rung me and said Peter was available. I think Abby had moved back up to Manchester. So Peter wanted to move from London to go, um, go with Abby. Um, so I said to H, listen, we can't. We, I don't think we'd be able to afford his wages. I don't think we'd be able to afford the the, the, the fee, but we'd be interested. Mm. Harry came back to me and said the club would would try and work something out if your club could raise a certain amount. So I rang Peter up and. and Peter said, okay, see see you know where you can go and then come back to me when it gets a little bit more solid so I, I went back to Peter and said I think we're you know at the stage where you know you can decide whether we can do it or not and about five minutes later he rang me up and he said to me people are asking me and I'm taking it people behind him the chief executive and whoever are asking me spending all that money on a play you'll get no return is it a good deal and I said to Peter Peter it's not the fact that we're going to sell him for a profit. It's the fact that Crouch is going to keep us in the Premier League for the next three <laughs> or four years. Mm. That's the investment. 
And he went, Tom, thank you very much. Put the phone down. And we signed him. Huge. Amazing. Wow. You know, yeah. there, there were a lot of players that arrived with a sort of similar profile in terms of who they were, the way that they approached the game, maybe even the way that they approached life. Uh, Jonathan Walters, Glenn yeah. Whelan, Ryan Shawcross, they're, they're big characters. Would you put a lot of stock in not only the footballer, but the oh, man? Everything character was, was everything. I, I, took, I took it, this is the way I worked. I took it on building blocks and those building blocks were players that you give three, four year contracts to. So Shawcross, Uth, Begovic, Sorensen, uh, Whelan, you know, White, Dean Whitehead, pe- people, John Walters, you know, people like that. They were building, they were solid citizens. They, they were ones that you, every week, they turned up, you know, irrespective of how it was going, they gave their best all the time. Glenn Whelan is a wonderful example. Every, every year we got promoted, we bought Glenn from Sheffield Wednesday. Every, we got promoted, I wanted to get better. I brought what I thought was better in within weeks Glenn stepped above that person I brought in then I'd bring someone else in and think we, you know, we can do better than Glenn and then he'd step again and I have so much respect for that boy over a period of time where he always he got better and he took the challenge a lot of people would have gone oh mm-hmm. and thrown, it, thrown the baton away Whelan just kept going and going and, and I have the, so much respect for the kid for doing that but just quickly so those were long term and then you'd bring people in like Pennant. Mm-hmm. And, and Jermaine was a terrific player. And, tr- and you couldn't question his ability or anything like that. But he was a little scallywag. <laughs> so he was, he was a two, three window yeah. oh. signing. So you'd get the best out of him. And then when he dropped a little bit, which uh, that's what Jermaine did. That was his character. When he dropped a bit, you'd move him on. So you'd have, I'd have that building blocks, they stay. And you'd have one or two that would give the place a lift for a short period and then you would cut and look for other people. So, so do you have that in the back of your mind? Like they will eventually leave at some point, even no matter how... Sort no, of, I, 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 had it, I had it in the back of my mind. I had it in, in, in what, I, what I did in respect of my, my prep for bringing players in. I knew their characters. I knew what they were like on the field, off mm. the field. Every, everything that they did and, and didn't do and got up to, then I, 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 you know, I knew what they were doing and I knew you know, what they were like. And the promotion year, we had, you know, we took Creswell um, and Cresy's again, oh, fabulous lad. And we played him wide left. And the Laura forwards is sent forward. Laura forwards would have said, I can't play wide left. Mm. He was absolutely fantastic. I think he got 15 goals from left-hand side, worked his socks off, unbelievable. Liam Lawrence, again, mm-hmm. you know, those two were, were, were just e- extraordinary in that championship uh, uh, that promotion side they, you know they, they never got the credit they deserved mm. you know they, they were fabulous and then you add Fuller Ricardo to that I had a, a very very special relationship with Rick Rick was one of those where you go well th- three you know window and then get rid of him I just I, you know, not fell in love with him but I just understood <laughs> yeah. I just understood nothing wrong with that yeah I just understood <laughs> his character mm. And what what he needed to 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 you know rev the engine up, because when he played, he was exceptional. He scored goals that if he had been at a top three or four club, you know they'd be talking about it now. Mm. But well, that because, one, that Burkamp one. Well, yeah, yeah. The, 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 you know the, the the goals that Rick scored and and the, the the amount of games he just took by the scruff of the neck um, and won by doing something special was and the players accepted him. You know he he he, he was. Jamaican, every day was Christmas Day. You know, like, yeah. he, he, what's his name? He, he just, you know, he'd float in and he'd float out. <laughs> but, but the lads, the lads, you know, I've got that great story. I, I've told it so many times. We're, we're playing in promotion year and we've got Wolves. Wolves are third. West Brom are winning the league with, uh, Tony was manager, Tony Mowbray was it. We're second, Wolves are third. And we've got a game with about five games to go, six games to go this season at Molyneux. We've sold six and a half thousand tickets and it's on an international break. So we play just before the international break and we win. And then the lads are going off on, on their trips with the, interna- the national sides. Rick hasn't got a game. We've looked everywhere. Dave, David Kemp has rung people up, and, but he's going away. <laughs> he's got his bags packed. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'll say to Rick, Rick, 
<laughs> it's not a game, mate. What are you doing? <laughs> so he said, no, 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 there's a, a friendly game. They've arranged a friendly game. So I spoke to the manager. Who the manager was, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. But there's a game. So, I, oh, okay. Can't be let him go. Let him let him have a week away. Can't be oh, big game when he comes back. Let him have a week away. So off he goes. Um, so I said, Rick, Monday, you know, you've got your game the first week. Make sure you're back in and then it's preparation. Big player for us. Yeah, yeah, can. Don't worry, don't worry about me. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be back. And so we get in on the Monday. We, we have that free week and then we get in on the Monday for the preparation for the, for the Wolves game. So we get in, no Ricardo. Tuesday, no Ricardo. I'm going absolutely potty. I've got Dave Watson, who's a physio, who's got his number. He's ringing him. He can get him now and then and then it breaks down and then he can't get him. And then... He's got to come in Thursday. Thursday, no Ricardo. Friday, no Ricardo. So oh, I'm absolutely... There's a game on Saturday as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm absolutely <laughs> livid. So we prepare for the game by having pre-match at the, at the Bet365 Stadium. So it's only 40 minutes down the road to Wolves. So everyone's in at 12. Then at, at past 12, we're going to get off and get to the game. So Rick walks in. You know, he's got his hat on the side of his head. He's wobbling away. <laughs> <laughs> and all the players have completely disowned him. They're on the, there's a table there with all the lads, and he's walked past the table, and he's tried to get a, 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 an acknowledgement from someone, and they've all blanked him. And he's walked up there, and there's a little table at the top of the room, and he's by himself. He's got his beans and his eggs, and he's so I'm like with Kempy, and I'm going, I'm going to kill him, Kempy, and we're going to act. <laughs> and Kempy's going to me. Dave's my assistant. Tom, leave him. We'll need him. We'll need him. I've picked the team. He's not in. He's not starting. So yeah, I've gone. Kemp, he can't get away with what he's got away with. And he's gone. Leave him. Just leave him. So he gets up. All the players leave. Get on the bus. We're still sat here. So he gets up. So I go, all right, mate. So he goes, yeah, yeah. He says, sorry, Gareth. He said, I've been in and out of Miami. I'll cut, you know, wrong passport. <laughs> wrong this. Wrong that. Oh, Rick. Just, just go. So he honestly wobbles. <laughs> down the corridor and I'm looking at Kempy and going he's not going to be no good for us today <laughs> Kempy says just stick him on the bench let's say we go stick him on the bench so we go 1-0 up one each uh, and then it goes 2-1 um, to us two each and they are they're playing down the slope now and they are battering us you know they're, they're mixed manager they're getting balls into the box Chaw across and Uthier up and Courty are heading balls out of <laughs> everywhere you know it's like so Kempy turns to me he goes get him on and I said Davey you can't get him on get him on <laughs> he said this is this is made for him so it's full house there so he runs up the, the uh, to warm up runs up the side of the pitch and he gets at the top of the pitch and he's turning he's talking to the supporters he's like I've got to Kempy I've got to Kempy he's not going to hit me some days he's life or death mate it's, it's all over if we don't get through this game he's up there he's chatting away and you know hello does he know they're war they're, they're wolf supporters they're not stock supporters and Kempy's get him on so he comes down um, drag someone off and he goes on we defend a corner someone heads it out uh, Rick's not where he's supposed to be right, he's right on the edge of the box picks the ball up dribbles past two or three players smashes in the top corner 3-2 runs down the pitch all the players are jumping on him and cuddling him and kissing him and everything else two minutes later da 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 never won does some magic passes it to Liam Liam smashes it in or it went that way we end up winning full two so I'm, I'm washed out. I'm completely, you know, he, he's done my brains in before the game and then I've had all the emotion of the game and it's a derby and this, that and the other and we, you know, we, we were up against it, but we win. So I get in the dressing room and I always, you know, I just say, listen, lads, fabulous. It's an important result and you were fantastic. No problems. So I sit in the corner, I take my cap off and I'm like a bathe of sweat. I, I can remember, I'm like this. And all of a sudden he gets up and he walks across the dressing room, comes right next to me, puts his arm around me and says, Gaff. And I go, Rick. And he goes, 
you worry too much. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, what? And he went, that's why you got no air, mate. <laughs> and he just left me, walked across the room, uh, did his little jig. And, that you know, that, that was, Rick. and then, you know, the lads, every, you know, everybody, everybody wanted to be around Rick then. You know, they hated him before the game mm. for what he'd done after the game. Yeah, it's all forgotten. It's amazing. <laughs> top mate, top do, do, do you know what, Sam? When you were describing uh, a while ago, you were describing Glenn Whelan and you were like using different character attributes. You could say that he's a bit of a fighter. He's got a fighting quality. No, he's, he's what? He's a cow. He's a proper cow. You know, he's a pro, he's got that. Um, he's got that desire, that inner desire. Um, yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me if Glenn one day became a very, very good manager, good really? coach, good man. He's just got that. Um, he's got that personality in that character when talking about Glen Whedon if I were to say Brett Shea Brett yeah that that was that was an interesting one because the the the, the great thing about Brett was I don't know you've most probably heard the story of you I, I, I know there, that something happened yeah there was a I think it was Brett's first training session at the club and we had everybody knew the rules so if someone fell over there was always two or three people there to pick him up mm. nobody got on anybody's backs we'd always look after one another. It was that, we had that spirit within the camp. And we, we did a training session, we got 11 against 11, and Glenn missed it a crossfield pass. And Brett didn't know what the spirit or what the, the characteristic of the club was at the time. And he put his hands up in the air, just went, God. Anyway, I'm, I'm looking over there, next thing I know, Glenn's over there sorting him out. <laughs> you never, <laughs> ever, ever do anything like that again at this football club. We don't criticise one another. We get on with things. Did it get uh, physical or was it just more work? I can't go into that, but it, it was... It was <laughs> That's a yes. Understood. <laughs> understood. <laughs> I'll just say this, Brett never ever put his hands up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing. And um, talking of like leaders and, you know, on the pitch and off the pitch, um, Ryan Shawcross always pops up in being a great leader. What well, we had... We had um, Begovic was... Begovic, Shawcross and uh, Robert Houthi. Uh, you know, we had Abdullah Five for a while mm -hmm. as well. That, that triangle of strength. And then like you say, you put Glenn and Dino or whoever in that midfield. That, that, was, that was really rock solid mm. and, and proper characters. And Ryan, I made Ryan captain when he was only, I think 19. Um, um, it's a good story for that one as well. So we, we uh, I ring, I, I, it's pre-season, I go and watch Ryan play for Manchester United thirds up, up uh, um, one of the, the non-league clubs in, around Manchester. So I r race up on a Saturday, I think it was a one o'clock kickoff. We trained early, raced up there, watched him. Then went and watched him on the Tuesday night at another non-league ground around Manchester. Then run, run Sir Alex up. Could we take him, you know, give you a loan, take the loan fee off if, if we sign him. So we agreed, I think a million or two million, whatever it was. Anyway, we signed him um, and his first game was at Cardiff. And he's 19 years of age. And we went to Cardiff and won 1-0 and, and Ryan scored. And that was the promotion year. And for a kid, he, he played with Courtney then, um, Leon Court. And for a kid of that age to go through a season, to get promoted and play the way he played, it was just fabulous. Mm. And he got, he got more confident and more confident and more confident as he went on. Yeah. yeah, great lad. So, any specific examples of where he was a good leader? Well, I'll, I'll 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 tell you one thing I did do to him, which was really really out of order, but it was because he was <laughs> the captain. We played, I think it was Blackburn, and Sam was manager at Blackburn at the time. We went to Blackburn and we played exceptionally, and I mean exceptionally well. Um, and we're two 0 up at half time. You know, we scored. Uh, um, a great goal from the goalkeeper threw it out to Matty Matty went down the wing beat a couple of people crossed it and Crouchy headed at the back post we were 2-0 up and with about a couple of minutes to go um, Ryan kicked the ball out of play you know, he could have played it up the line but he kicked it out of play and the, 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 the referee blew his whistle and as I'm walking down the side of the pitch um, I said to Kempy this is, this, this is the best we've played and Dave turned to me and went yeah we've got to be a little bit careful now you know with the complacency so I said no I've got it mate I've got it so I walked in I, I went into the toilet went into the bathroom as I always do and then they're, they're all chuckling away and everybody's happy with everybody else it, it was really top class first half performance 
and I, I went in and I thought, oh, I'm, I'm, g- I'm going to go for it. So I picked on Ryan because he was my captain and I absolutely hammered him for kicking the ball at a play. And I just <laughs> said, you know, you think we're 2-0 up, you lot think you're 2-0 up, you've, you've done it. Da, 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 da. This is Blackburn, Sam's a top manager, you'll have them roaring second half. If you ain't on it, blah, 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 blah. And you've just shown that you've dropped, you know, that standard that we were, we'd set and da, 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 absolutely hammered him. Anyway, I went into the bathroom before we go back out for the second half and I've got John Walter, uh, jo- <laughs> Jonathan Woodgate and Matt Yupson next to me and Woody turns to me and says, Gaffer, he says, whatever you do, don't put me on, please. And I said, what? <laughs> he says, I can't play as well as what Ryan's just played and you, you just hammered him. <laughs> <laughs> and I just looked at Woody and smiled and walked out and then on the Monday I pulled Ryan in and just said, you had to take one for the team there, son. Mm. Yeah, there was an, I thought you played really, really well, but you had to take it for Did the team. Did he get it? Was he on board with it? Mm. Well, I think he had a bad weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I think he recovered on Monday after yeah. I'd spoken to him. But there's no like ill feelings. When you get that like, kind of dressing down, there's no like... I, I, think, there's a, I think there's... You know, I've fallen out with loads of people and loads of players and everything else. You know, but, you know I had Andy Griffin. Me and Griff fell out right at the end. Um, you know, we wanted to play more football. Um, and I, I don't blame him for that. He was a top player. We had a bit of a fallout, but have I, did I have respect for Griff? Yeah, enormous respect. Mm. Um, great, great lad. Mm. Again, another winner. Wanted to, you know, really give everything for the football club, local boy. Um, and, and you do, you have those, you know, you have those moments in management. Um, I, I think it's less so today, but I think, you know, there, there was confrontation um, or a little bit of confrontation then, sorting things out and getting things done properly. Mm. You know, you're always challenged as a manager. You're always challenged, whether it's what, you, you, what you're doing to prepare the players or, you know, what, things that they don't think is necessary. Um, and, you know, the, I think there can only be, you know, one singer and one song mm. if you're going to be successful. Um, and that's, you know, that's always been my... Um, my way and my attitude, really. You always had a very good relationship with Matthew Etherington. Matty was, Matt, Matty, the, the lad used to say he was my... Teacher's uh, pet. Yeah, teacher's <laughs> pet and, and everything else. Matty was, I thought Matty was an outstanding player. We took him from uh, Tottenham um, and he'd had one or two issues off the pitch. Um, I think he's gone into that himself and I think people know. Um, I, ju- I just, I, I, his balance... When he was on song, his balance and the pace and the quality of crosses he got in was just exceptional. Like I said, we were very, very fortunate to have, um, for a good period, Matty and Jermaine. Jermaine was, again, a very, very clever player with the ball and the quality he had as well was, was fantastic. But no, Matty was, he was a little winger <laughs> amongst a lot of big people playing yeah. in that team and he got spoiled. And did you get, did you get a lot of banter like in in the changing room with like calling him a teacher's pair or was it just a bit? Hey, just just now and then they they'd bring it up if you know <laughs> if I said everybody in on Monday apart from you Matt you can have a day off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they weren't too happy with it. Like um, Would that so, actually happen? Would you? Well, actually... No. <laughs> but, say, but no, that. that that you know that little things that I'd let him off for I'd say yeah. you know we were absolutely rubbish Saturday. Apart from you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> his little, little twinkle in his eye. But he was one you had to keep on side. You, had, you know, some you can kick, others you have to cuddle. And, you know, right. again, that's management. Then any transfer regrets? Um, oh, there's always people that you, 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 you try to sign. You know, we, we had Alonso in. Um, Xavi Alonso? Uh, no, uh, the lad who was at Chelsea. And oh, Marcus, Marcus, Marcus Alonso. Yeah. We had him in from um, Blackburn. I think he was at Blackburn. Then we, well, was it Bolton? Bolton, 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 yeah, Bolton yeah. sat him in and never signed him. And then he went on and did fantastically well. He's a lovely kid as well. Lovely kid. Uh, people like that. Yeah, there's, there's people we've missed. Serge Nabry? Um, yeah, they, they, I, 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 I'll say this again, and I've said it loads of times. We'll start with the fact that Gnabry was at Arsenal for four years. So he's an Arsenal player. He had Arsene Wenger there as his manager. Four years. And then they loaned him out. And they loaned him out because they couldn't get anything out of him. If he was doing well, he'd have stayed at Arsenal, but they couldn't get nothing out of him. So he came to us. Boldy rang me up, Steve Boldy, great lad, ex, obviously, Stoke player. And he said he's worth it, worth, he's got loads of ability, but we, we're wit's end with him. He came um, and didn't do very well. 
Um, and that year, I think we finished 10th. Well, we were definitely in the top 10. At, and we had people like Morrison, Brunt, mm. real good players. And Serge just, he, he just didn't fit into the group. A matter of fact, there was a reserve game against Aston Villa. Um, and Jimmy Shan was, was, uh, took it, who was the reserve team manager. And we used to let, you know, we'd, we'd say, we want those players to play. And then we let Jimmy take it and Darren Moore and people like that. Um, and I never watched that game. I actually had to, I think I was home for some reason. Um, it was on a Monday evening. And when I rang, Kempy went to the game. When I rang Kempy up and asked him, Jimmy had taken him off at half time. He was, he was that bad. And then when he went on, you know, Arsenal then, he went back to Arsenal. Arsenal then sold him to Verde Bremen. Mm. You know, so I think Wenger maybe didn't see what we didn't see. Yeah, we get hammered for having him, you know, people say, oh, blimey, what a miss. Mm. What they don't think, he, he wasn't our player. Mm. We just had him for a few months. Wenger had him all that period and didn't see nothing in him. Mm. So, you know, and Kempy, I can remember a great quote, you know, I ring Kempy up and say, oh, you know, I'm pleased the kid's done well. You know, I have no, no bad feelings towards the kid at all. Mm. Um, and I think most probably the West Brom, going to West yeah. Brom and thinking he was just going to walk in, mm. most probably gave him the Little biggest favor. kick up the yeah. backside he'd had. Mm. They sold him to Werder Bremen and then he went on to obviously uh, Bayern and, and done wonderful things. I can remember ringing Kempy up one day and saying, have you seen... Uh, Gnabry you know he scored again for for Madrid uh, for Fine. Munich and he said to me Tom it must be his twin brother <laughs> it cannot be it cannot be the lad we had and that, that that's serious you know it, it was chalk and cheese just finally on Gnabry was it more of like a, do you think it was a skill thing or was it do you think it was attitude oh, no. no I just think he found it, I, 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 it there's and I'll say this the first loan that a player gets from a top three or four club is always difficult for them because they, they are spoilt, absolutely rotten. <laughs> Arsenal, Tottenham, Chelsea, go and have a look at their facilities. Go and have a look at, you know, the way they're fed, the way they're looked after, you know, they're, they're everything else. They're completely and utterly spoilt and they're playing with proper players. Mm. And I mean, top, top players. And when you drop down just a little level, it's more difficult to get that feeling, that edge. And I always say, if I'm taking, if, I, if people ring me up now and say, he's a good player to ask, has he been out on loan yet? Mm. Has he tasted it yet? Yeah, right. Let him go somewhere else, and let him taste it. When he comes back, see if you can get him a second time round or a third time mm. round, because he'll be much more prepared for the real battles than what they are playing under 21's academy football. So I now need to ask you this. This is the one I've been waiting for. James Beattie, nude. What happened here? No, well, well let, let, let's put that, that season. If you, if you actually look at the season that we signed um, and it was, um, you know, the uh, winter window, we signed, we were struggling at the time. I think we were third from bottom. We signed Matty Etherington and James. Um, and without, without those two, I don't think Stoke would have stayed in the Premier League. So those two played an enormous part. The incident in the dressing room, I will not talk about because I'm old fashioned and I believe what happens in the dressing room happens in the dressing room. But I'll say this, B.E. for when he was with us, he did fantastic. And he kept us in, him and Matty, uh, really was the icing on the cake that kept us in the league. Do you talk to him now? Well, he's, I don't know where he is. <laughs> <laughs> no. So no, 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 I don't know where he is. <laughs> no. Where is he? <laughs> I thought he was coming through the door. Then. <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> so, Tony, uh, we are going to play a little game with you. It's called yeah. a glass or pass. Okay, so we're just going to give you a manager, yeah. and uh, you know, historically, uh, famously, people will have you know have a drink with the managers yeah. after the game. Yeah. So we're just asking, uh, give you a manager, and you just tell us whether you have a drink with them or you. Yeah. You'd pass and leave, all right? So the first one is Ian Holloway. Glass. Glass. What was it about Ian Holloway that you enjoyed? He was godfather to my first child. Oh. So Ian, Ian was a 14-year-old uh, lad at Bristol Rovers when I first met him. He was about that eye. Can you see that? He, he was knee eye. About my height, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, And obviously, obviously I, I played and seen Ian grow at Bristol Rovers. So, yeah, he was godfather to, to oh, my wow. son, Anthony. Sir Alex Ferguson. 
Paas. Als een wenger. Paas. <laughs> ja. No, listen, the, the lads used to, the, the lads would go in and have a drink with Arsene. Um, Kempy always went in the rooms. I think Rudgy did as well and one or two other people. But I, I did have the ump with him for what he said initially um, when we played at Stoke. Um, and yeah, it, you know, we've, we've spoken since and we've been fine. So... We better know that we're not in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just remind us what, what was the quote, the famous quote that he, he said? Um, he classed us as a rugby team and he thought that throwing should be banned and that you should just play mm. with your foot. He's still doing, he's still on that one about the throwing. You know, you've left the sky. You know, in his role now, <laughs> in, in his role now, he's, he honestly thinks that a throw-in puts the team that win the throw-in at a disadvantage and he therefore thinks that it should be something else. Yeah, send him the tapes of... Stoke City. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See how disadvantaged we were. Yeah. Yep. Love that. Um, Pep Guardiola. Oh, glass. Yeah. yeah. Would, you, would you rate him as one of the top, top managers that you've ever come up against? Um, also one of the nicest people I've met as well. So I've, I've luckily managed against him a couple of times. I got my backside slapped a few times with their team. <laughs> um, but he's a nice man as well. He, he uh, you know, he really impressed um, my staff um, with how humble he is mm. and how nice he is, yeah. Jurgen Klopp? Uh, n- no, that was a pass. Never mm. went in. At, I never went in at uh, when I was. I, well, when I was uh, when I managed at uh, or uh, took teams to Liverpool before, it was Kenny, Kenny, and I'd always go in and have a drink with Kenny because I knew Kenny uh, and the family he had a family room. Um, and then with Brendan, I'd always go in and have a drink with Brendan. Um, but with Klopp, it just, you know, foreign managers, some foreign managers don't have that same come in and have a drink with us and, you know, it's different for them. So, mm. no, we didn't, uh, we didn't see Klopp. What about Jose Mourinho? A glass. Yeah, he was, he was up for a glass of wine. Was yeah. he? I've, I've I heard something about Jose Mourinho. I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard that if he liked the opposition manager, he'd give them a bottle of Portuguese wine that he himself Yeah, really had a liked. couple of bottles. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay, so you got the nice stuff. Yeah, did you get the nice you stuff? You got the nice stuff. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. Love yeah. that. Yeah. Um, what about Alan Pardew? Glass. Yeah. 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 And what was Alan Pardew like as a, as a manager? Obviously, we saw his, I, I don't forget his antics uh, in the FA Cup final. Yeah. Good answer. Very yeah, good, good answer. Good answer. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. Remember, yeah. What, what was he like? No, I, I, I think Pardew was a South East London boy. You know, he's... he's a bit smart, <laughs> um, but no, you, you know. I, again, I, I've you know he was um, he was at Reading when I started. Oh, sorry, when he started, mm. um, I was obviously further down the line than Alan. Um, but no, we've always uh, we've always gone all right. Yes. And finally, Sam Allardyce. Glass. Yeah. Bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Pint. Bucket. Pint. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Tony thank you so much unfortunately we've run out of time so we would love to have you back on at some point to talk about West Bromwich Albion and Crystal Palace but for now we're going to have to say goodbye and thank you so much to Tony Pulis thank you very much I who's think up, everyone in the Villa squad yeah, who's up would say I'm the best golfer at the club. Who's your Not being big headed, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a group WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you? A, called a, AVFC Golfers. Yeah? If you were to put a message in that WhatsApp group now saying, lads, am I the best, what would come back? What are you on about, Kashi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 